Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. There was a, a shortcoming in what we were doing for the English audience lately. So uh, we have started doing these uh, small gatherings uh, every Friday uh, to cover uh, some content uh, for the English speaking audience. Over so here in Pakistan, uh, youngsters from the universities and different walks of uh, people from uh, the working class uh, do come over. Um, last Friday we discussed uh, the five W's of Imam al Mahdi. I hope uh, you guys would remember something out of that. Uh, that why there is a personality like Imam al Mahdi is needed. Uh, who will be Imam al Mahdi? Uh, where will he appear, when will he appear, how will he be recognized and what will he do after uh, the allegiance has been given to him. Uh, so uh, this Friday uh, I thought this is very important uh, for us to know what will be the sequence of events uh, towards the end of the times. and. Uh, uh, since the people who come over here do understand that uh, the s small signs of Qiyama have already been fulfilled completely and this is the time for the major signs. Minor signs have been completed and this is the time for major signs. So uh, it is very important for us to know that what will be the sequence of the major signs and how things will unfold when there would be the last chapter of uh, the mankind on, the, on, on, on this earth. So uh, we can divide major signs into two parts. Uh, first is the four major signs and then there are two, three uh, events of the, events of, uh, the Qiyama. And why I'm calling, calling um, the rest as the events of Qiyamah because after the four major signs are completed then events of Qiyamah start to occur because at that time according to the narrations of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam no repentance would be accepted. So the four major signs we are talking about that would start occurring after the minor signs in sequence, in, cons in, in consecutive order are uh, number one, the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi, number two, uh, the coming out of the Jal, uh, the Antichrist, the third one would be uh, the return of Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam from the sky, from the heavens, and the fourth one would be the release of Gog and Magog. These would be the four, four major signs of Qiyamah. And right after that, like, um, like the beast of the earth and uh, passing away of all of the Muslims uh, with the cool breeze uh, and a few things uh, like that, you can say that these are the uh, events of 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 uh, the judgment day that start appearing um, within this world. At that time, no repentance would be accepted. So Imam al Mahdi, the first major sign, would would come when the earth would be filled with, according to Ahadith, zulman wa jawra. The earth would be dark and bleak and black and the whole earth would be filled with injustice and corruption. And the whole earth would be filled with people who are involved in injustice or corruption or the people who are vulnerable to injustice or corruption. There would be only two kinds of people. There would hardly be any justice. There would hardly be any peace on whole earth. And we do understand that we are living in the times when the people living in the peaceful lands are not 
living peacefully. Your money is being stolen. This is the major example I mention every time. Your money is being stolen from your pockets even while you are sitting over here. The devaluation of money that happens in the case of paper currency and digital currency only was not something uh, the, the world had seen before, before these modern capitalist times. So you are sitting in your bedroom, you are lying in your home, you are sitting in your classroom, you are attending this meeting, you are, you are in masjid, wherever you are, the governments and the corporations have the ability to turn the knob and devalue your, the paper currency and you would be from the riches to the rags while you were not even involved in that business. Parents these days are oppressing their own child. They're oppressing their own children. Children are being taken as the investments, the money spent on the, on the children for their education, for their food, is mostly being taken as investments and the parents want it as a return. The daughters are being seen as the investments. The basic rights of children are being taken away. And not to mention the worst things the children are doing to the parents. The education system that was supposed to build a generation. The religious system. The systems of, of Madaris. The people leading the Ummah religiously, everything is corrupted and the intentions mostly are corrupted. There is hardly any light you, could, you, you, you can find uh, in the modern education system or in the religious, uh, religious education system. Everything is for vested interests. Talk about the health system, it's nothing but a business, a person who's dying in an emergency room is asked to be asked to pay the fees initially otherwise he can die on the deathbed and he would no, he would not be held by the emergency team the earth is dark and bleak and black i can go on and talk about this for hours that that the earth is filled with injustice and corruption the governments are corrupt the people are corrupt even the hawkers, the shopkeepers, the healthcare system, the education system, the religious system, the big, the small, the old, the children, the women, everyone is involved in some kind of corruption. So the earth, and, and this is what I'm talking about, the peaceful parts of the world. And talk about the wars happening all over the place. What's happening in Ukraine? What's Russia doing in Syria? What's hap happening in Iraq? What's ISIS doing in Libya? What is the United States doing in different parts of the world? What's happening in Burma? Everything is corrupted at this time. And even the things you think are peaceful are not peaceful. They are corrupted by the capitalist system. So Imam, this is the time for Imam al-Mahdi to appear. So, so the minor signs are completed and the time for the major signs has started and we do understand the person who is going to be Imam al-Mahdi has been identified but the time for his bayah has yet to come. When Imam al-Mahdi takes bayah initially According to the narrations of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Imam al-Mahdi would appear when he would be 40 years of age. When he would be 40 years of age, he would be recognized. But recognition does not mean bayah. The people start mixing two things. Coming in government or taking oath from the people is different from being recognized as a person, as a leader, or as, as, a, as a personality. You can understand this from the life of Nabi Muhammad that he was recognized when he 
announced prophethood after he was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was recognized by Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. He was recognized by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was recognized soon after by Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was recognized by Aisha. He was, uh, sorry, he was recognized by Fatima and so on radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And so on and so forth and Umar and so on. Usman and all of the Sahaba as we know radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. So he was recognized. He announced prophethood and he was recognized by a few people initially and he was 40 years of age at that time. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a state, make, made him a leader of a state, the state of Madinatul Munawwara, then he was, he was around 53 years of age. So there is a difference between being recognized, being known, and, be, and, and taking oath from the people are, are sitting in the government. So similarly, Imam al-Mahdi is going to be a leader, but he would be recognized when he would be 40, but he would take oath later on. So my understanding, this, there's hardly any narrations about what would be the age of Imam al-Mahdi when he takes oath. There are narrations about his recognition. His age would be 40 when he would be recognized, but there are hardly any narrations about the age when he would take oath. So my understanding is that we can map, map Imam al-Mahdi's life on the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a few reasons. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said his name would be parallel to my name. Yuwati ismuhu ismi. Parallel to my name, rhyming with my name, similar to my name, not exactly my name. So that's one thing. Second thing, Yuati Ismuhu Ismu Abihi Ismu Abi. His father's name would be like the name of my father. So there are two likings, two similarities. And we know from narrations that he would be 40 years of age. There's another similarity. So on and so forth. Imam al Mahdi is going to be a normal man initially, but he when he takes oath when he is given bay'ah, he would be yuslihullahu fi layla, layla, Allah would fix him in one night. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not fixed in one night, he was pure and he was already fixed and he was sent as a pure person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was a prophet. Imam al-Mahdi is not going to be a prophet so he would not be a pious person initially but there is another similarity that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born orphan. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an ordinary man. He was not a leader. He was not the head of a tribe. He was not the head of a city. He was not a king. He was an ordinary person. And he was not too rich as well. So same goes for Imam al-Mahdi that he would be an ordinary person but there's an addition that he would be fixed in one night. But we find so many, so many parallels between the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the life of Imam al-Mahdi. So we can assume since Imam al-Mahdi would be initially introduced to the world at the age of 40, we can assume that Imam al-Mahdi would also give oath, uh, so take oath. Imam al-Mahdi would also be given bay'ah at the age of 53. So there would be 13 years, approximately 13 years, before his recognition, uh, between his recognition and his uh, coming to power. So these are these 13 years and then when Imam al-Mahdi takes oath from people, he takes uh, the position of a leadership that would happen at the time uh, at the place of Makkah al mukarrama but this needs to be remind, reminded over and over again that Imam al-Mahdi would not be born in Mecca Imam al-Mahdi would not be born in Medina Imam al-Mahdi would be coming from the east you have to give allegiance to Imam al-Mahdi and he would come from the east. That's for sure. There is no other narration compare, com, uh, in competition with this hadith that Imam al-Mahdi would be from east. 
So Imam al-Mahdi would come from east and Imam al-Mahdi would take oath near Kaaba and then Imam al-Mahdi would rule for seven years. And this is also to correct the record that Imam al-Mahdi would be the one who would be leading Ghazwatul Hind and this is another parallel just like the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went from the land of Makkah, the land of idol worshippers to the land of Medina and the state of Medina fought with the people of Makkah and Allah's house was liberated from the idols. Similarly, we know the same things are happening that this land of Pakistan, the land of the pure, has been separated, has been detached from the bigger land of idol worshippers. So you can say that Imam al-Mahdi went from the land of idol worshippers to the pure land, to the, to, to the land where people uh, worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Pakistan ka matlab kya? La ilaha illallah. So there is this similarity. So just like Ghazwatul Badr, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led his people to fight with the people of, uh, to, to, uh, to the worshippers of idols. Similarly, Imam al-Mahdi would lead the people of La ilaha illallah to fight with the idol worshippers and that would be Ghazwatul Hind. And not only that, Ghazwatul Hind would expand into Malhamatul Kubra as the world knows as, as the clash of the civilizations that would be a huge war that would happening all over the world and there would be millions of people dying uh, in, in, in this war. So we are, we are setting this uh, record straight that Imam al-Mahdi would be recognized at the age of 40 either by one person or many people, doesn't matter. Even if it is one person, that's uh, the sign coming true. So Imam al-Mahdi would be recognized at the age of 40. Imam al-Mahdi would take oath at the age of 53. Imam al-Mahdi, uh, number three, would lead Ghazwatul Hind. Imam al-Mahdi would lead uh, Malhamatul Kubra. And Imam al-Mahdi would be the one under whose leadership Khalifatullahi, Khalifatullah al-Mahdi, Khalifatullahi fil Ars. He would be Allah's appointee on earth. So he would lead the whole earth into Allah's oneness and his ruling, his era would be the time when Allah's deen would enter every small and big house. There would be no, even a cottage, a big mansion or a small house or, or, or a flat or nothing would be left where at least one person would be Muslim. So Allah's deen would enter every big and small house on the whole earth. That would be the era of Imam al-Mahdi and this would last for seven years. And after seven years, something would happen. Maybe a success of Imam al-Mahdi, maybe, uh, maybe a conquer of a land or something. That a person from the humans who would be, a bo who would bo who would be born a human would come out, he would be very furious on something and he would come out, he would release himself out of, uh, of self-imposed captivity or whatever you call um, loneliness or whatever you, you can call. So he would come out and that would be Dajjal. So Dajjal, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us would, would be on earth on land for 40 days. The first day of the Jal would be Yawmun Kasana, that first day would be like a year. Then Yawmun Kajumu'ah, the second day would be like a week. And uh, sorry, the second day would be like a month, Yawmun Kashahar. And the third day would be called Yawmun Kajumu'ah, that the third day would be like a week. So the Jal would be on earth for 40 days, but the first three days According to hadith, when Sahaba asked about the first three days that how will we offer our prayers, our salat, then Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that you have to offer your salat according to the normal days, not like five, five prayers in the whole year, no. 
you would have to offer your salat like the normal days so it means that the days would be normal the time stamps would be normal the time cycles would be normal but Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam meant an era a longer era then a relatively shorter era and then even a smaller era so my understanding uh, to this matter is that the first era is a system that could be the system uh, that, that the British Empire imposed on the whole world at the colonial time. And the second day would be capitalism that we are uh, living through and, uh, and, and, uh, and we are passing from, uh, moving from second day to the third day. And the third day would be uh, this technological or artificial intelligence rev revolution that's happening around the world that you are being washed even in your beds the the computer systems know what you are doing what you are eating what you are what you want what your interests are what your past is what your future is and so on and so forth so the rest of the days would be uh, like the normal days so my point uh, of mentioning this uh, hadith, hadith over here is that when the jal comes uh, people might be going like we have to wait a year for the first day to end but Practically, I don't think it would be like that. Practically, his days would be like the very normal days because the three days would have already passed. Three days of the Jal are before Imam al Mahdi, and the rest 37 days are after Imam al Mahdi. So the Jal appears after the seven years of Imam al Mahdi, but he would, would, would spend only 37 days on earth. So in these 37 days, he would he would fight Imam al-Mahdi, he would fight the Muslims and, it, and he, would, he would spread corruption and destruction all over the world. And during the seven days of Imam al-Mahdi, like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, the earth would, would pop out its, its, its crops, the earth would make its, its uh, treasures to pop out and Allah would let the sky and the, and the clouds um, shower all of the all of the rains and all of the water that they have so so the time of Imam al-Mahdi is the time of huge success huge material progress and huge technological progress as well so when the Jal appears there would be there would be the technological climax under the leader of leadership of Imam al-Mahdi but the Jal would fight with the Muslims and the warfare would be so heavy that everything built at that time would be destructed by the Jal uh, during the fight between the Jal and Imam al Mahdi. So th that would happen within 37 days, and on the 37th day or 38th day, Wallahu Alam, we would see Isa alayhi salatu was salam descending from the sky. And Isa salatu was salam is promised that he would finish the fitna of the Jal and the Jal would be killed. When the Jal would be killed, the people who would have taken the Jal as their God, anti Christ as their God, who would have accepted anti Christ as their God, Nauzubillah min Zalik, would then want to repent. But as it has been already told that at that time when the Jal appears, um, when the Jal appears, the door of repentance would be closed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would refuse to accept the repentance of the people who had worshipped the Jal as their God. So Allah would let the Gog and Magog release. So Gog and Magog would be released to punish the people who had accepted the Jal as their God. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the followers of Imam al Mahdi, make us among the followers of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, make us avoid the fitna of the Jal and, and free us from uh, fitna of the Jal. Uh, and, and make us prepare for that time uh, starting from now inshallah so Gog and Magog they would be a creature who would jump like they're like 
chimpanzees like their physical features would be something like chimpanzees or apes uh, and they would they would be huge big creatures and they would have a a grudge for the humans uh, for some reason probably because they were uh, they were uh, closed in a in a closed space by Zulkarnain uh, so they would kill humans and, would, and they would destroy the crops they would kill everything left over after the fight between uh, Antichrist and Imam al-Mahdi so the earth would be cleaned off like not cleaned but destructed and there would hardly be any life left but the people would, with Imam al-Mahdi would be given a special special uh, hiding place that Imam al-Mahdi would lead his people into that place into Medina and those people would be safe from the fitna of Dajjal and those people would be safe from Gog and Magog as well then Imam al-Mahdi would take his people to Isa alayhi salam who would be uh, in, in a hilly place and they would join each other and then that would that event would uh, would happen where Imam uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would ask Imam al-Mahdi to lead the salah but Imam al-Mahdi would not want to but eventually they would agree uh, that Isa alayhi salam would lead the prayer on this um, uh, one point that Isa alayhi salam would lead all the prayers afterwards and Isa alayhi salam that would be uh, a statement a practical statement that Isa alayhi salam would come not as a prophet not as the son of the God Nauzubillah he would come as the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the follower of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, he would offer the prayer after offer the salah after Imam al-Mahdi and then Isa alayhi salam and Imam al-Mahdi all of them will live together for some time Allah knows how much time and then there would be a cool breeze according to a hadith and according to Imam al-Mahdi as we know Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim who has been uh, recognized as Imam al-Mahdi and according to his dreams that cool breeze mentioned in the hadith is actually some sort of uh, flu or some sort of like very soft kind of um, uh, of, of uh, illness or something uh, that people would die one after the other and that would happen uh, where the Muslims are and the Muslims would be with Isa alayhi salam and with Imam al-Mahdi in Madinatul Munawwara and they would uh, be dying one after the other so much so that, that uh, they, once the Muslims come back after burning and offering uh, Salatul Janazah of one Muslim when they reach back another would be dead and so on and so forth the Muslims would be dying one after the other and all of the Muslims would pass away and the rest of the earth and on the rest of the earth there would be scattered people and according to hadith they would be so worse that they would be openly doing the awkward, awkward things uh, they, they would be openly uh, doing uh, the acts of um, sexual acts and so on uh, openly doing like the donkeys uh, according to some narrations so they would be very worse people they won't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they won't be the worshippers of, uh, uh, of of, of uh, like they, the very satanic bad worst people worst people I would say the earth would be left with those people and those are the people on which the trumpet would be blown on which the sewer as we know would be blown and those are the people upon which the qayama would occur and it would be so sudden that those two people who are purchasing and selling cloth would not be able to complete that a person pulling out water out of a well would not be able to finish his thing and whoever is doing whatever would be finished right then and there their economy their their material there would be very few people not too many uh, their economy their 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 material 
uh, achievements or, or, or material belongings would be fine, but they would be the worst people and those are the people upon which the trumpet would be blown. And that's how the sequence from today until the day of Qiyamah would occur. And if I mention uh, approximate years as well, that would be that would be enough to open our eyes even, even at this point when Imam al-Mahdi has been recognized at this point we know the approximate timelines as well even if at this point if we don't open our eyes even if at this point we don't show our allegiance to Imam al-Mahdi there would be no, no worst thing that we can do to ourselves uh, and since we have, we know that Imam al-Mahdi has been recognized, so according to, we, we can do a separate detailed sessions on uh, how these dates are uh, calculated, but you can roughly understand that Imam al-Mahdi started telling his dreams, bringing people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, telling people to avoid polytheism, shirk, when he was 40, and from 30, from his 40 years of age, 13 years would happen in I think 2027 or 2028. So the bay'ah at the hands of Imam al-Mahdi would happen at the age of, uh, in the year 2028 approximately. You can add, add seven years to that uh, when the jal comes and you can keep a cushion of two years because according to some narrations Imam al-Mahdi would rule seven or nine years. So maybe that is the cushion for the wars, uh, the, the situation building for the wars and so on. Uh, so Ghazwatul Hind and Malhamatul Qubra, so you can have a cushion of two years after Imam al-Mahdi takes oath. So 2008 plus seven years, that would be 2035. Or you can have the cushion of two years, 2037. The Jal appears. 40 days, 37 days to be precise, uh, in 2035 or 2037. In one month, the Jal would be finished. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam would descend from the sky the same day the Jal is finished. And the same day, most probably, uh, Gog and Magog, Yajuj Majuj are released. So two, we are talking about 2035 or 2037 when Hazrat Isa a.s. would be among us, inshallah. The Jal would be killed, Gog and Magog would be released, the earth would be destructed fully, completely, human generation would be finished, mostly animals and crops and so on, things would be finished as well. Only a few people, maybe a few thousand people with Imam al-Mahdi and a very scarce population of uh, worse people around the world uh, who would not be uh, with Imam al-Mahdi and we are talking about 2035 or 37 and Isa salam, according so to some narrations would be on earth for 40 years and according to some other uh, narrations for 7 years so how come we settle for uh, a balance between the two types of narrations so again that's my personal understanding that Isa salam, we know was raised to the sky when he was 33 years of age. So if he stays on, the, uh, on earth for 37 years, he would, be, he would pass away when he would be 40. So I think that the balance between the two narrations would, uh, would be that Isa salam, would be on earth for 7 years and he would pass away when he would be 40 and he, his total lifespan on earth would be 40 years since he was born 33 years he was raised to the sky he comes back at the same age people we don't age beyond this earth we don't age in the heavens we won't age there so he would come back when he would be 33 again and for seven years he would be on earth and he would be 40 when he uh, passes away again so uh, we can we can have an approximate calculation of when that cool breeze would uh, happen and all of the Muslims would pass away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, shahada 
but uh, ones among them who would be alive at that time can be sure that you cannot be alive beyond 37 plus 7 years 2044 you cannot be alive beyond 2044 for certain 2044 all I'm not talking about the date of Qiyamah I'm talking about the final dates the final year when this Ummah would be finished uh, there would be no Muslim on earth anymore and we this is shocking even if we are not shocked yet even if not if we are if we are not shivering with these calculations we are not having goosebumps then there is something very very wrong with us there is some kind of covering on our hearts there is some kind of I don't know what we must be shivering we must be frightened we must be shocked we must have goosebumps with this very clear specific calculations that we know by now <coughs> excuse me that none of us can be alive beyond 2044 or most probably 2042 or max 2044 and this is some people start pointing fingers that nobody knows the date of Qiyamah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even tell the date of Qiyamah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only Allah knows that I'm talking about the age of this ummah the Muslims passing away and I told you with the authentic references this calculation is not based on guesses this calculation is because of what has been told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us with date with with uh, with the timelines 40 years of age of imam al-madi 13 years before his bay'ah seven years of his uh, rule then 40 days or 37 days of the jal then a few days of uh, gog and magog then the seven years of uh, uh, isa ibn maryam alayhi salatu wasalam so everything the timeline has been told once you know who's imam al-madi you can start calculating everything from his age when he's 40 he would be recognized when he's 53 he would give bayah when he is 53 plus 7 years 60 uh, the jal would appear and 37 days the jal would be done Hazrat Isa al -Islam would come back from the sky Gog and Magog everything would happen in in very few like very short span of time like the hadith when these signs start appearing they would start appearing in a way that if you if you uh, if you break a necklace S the beats start falling similarly these events would be start would start happening right after the other night not like uh, the the world was moving normally before that so this is what would happen so you can be sure that 2044 we would be done and again this is not the date of Qayama this is not the date of uh, the year of uh, the, the blowing of trumpet Allah knows for how many years after all of the Muslims uh, from this earth pass away Allah knows for how much time Allah would let the earth be corrupted by those worst people that Allah knows Allah knows uh, would it be a year a, a day a week a month a year a many years or a century Allah knows or more whatever that's uh, that's beyond uh, what we, we must be discussing our concern should be that most of us can be sure the maximum time spent we have even the child a newborn who has born already or who would be born in the near future can be sure that they cannot be alive beyond 2044 the point of telling all these things is that we must open our eyes we must start looking for uh, Imam al-Mahdi if even if the people do not agree with Muhammad Qasim uh, as Imam al-Mahdi that's your personal choice but you have the choice of doing istikhara and seeking guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anyone from all over the world who has done that so far has not come back to us telling that his istikhara went the other way so there is enough evidence that 
Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim is the Imam al Mahdi who has been recognized and he would take oath in 2024 or so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to ask for his guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to haq and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us free ourselves from all forms of shirk inshallah and may we and our children and our families and our fathers and our relatives and friends and and everyone be among the righteous ones be among the helpers of Imam al-Mahdi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, free us from the fitna of the jal and since it's Juma and I would suggest everyone to uh, to to uh, recite Surah Al Kahf uh, every Friday, inshallah. Qulu qulu haza wa astaghfirullah alik wa lakum wa lisaal al Muslimin wa al Muslimat. Everyone is uh, suggested. Uh, if you want to join uh, our uh, session every Friday, you can go to awasnasi.com slash join and uh, we would shortlist a few people initially up to 10 people later on we might um, allowing more might be allowing more people thank you very much assalamu alaikum jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh